What's up guys, welcome to Bardent, my name is Heinrich, and today we're going to take a look at creating a ledge grab and climb system as seen in games like Dead Cells. Before we jump into Unity, let's quickly take a look at how we plan on doing this. Here we can see our talent map with the character standing on top of it. We currently have a ray cast out in the direction the character is facing to detect walls. We are going to make another ray cast almost at the top of the character that will also be detecting walls. If the character is in a position like this, where the bottom ray cast is touching a wall but the top one is not, we know we have a corner that can be grabbed and climbed. So let's take a closer look at that corner tile. Because we know the position of the wall check ray cast and the distance it goes out, we know this position. And with this position, we can find the bottom left corner of the tile if we are facing right, and the bottom right corner of the tile if we are facing left. Now that we know this position, we are going to generate two new points, one at the side of the ledge with a certain x and y offset, and one above the ledge with a different x and y offset. We will then hold the game object in the lower position while the animation runs, and then as soon as it finishes, set the position of the character to the top position. Okay, now let's jump into Unity. We'll start off by heading into our sprites folder and just dragging in the ledge climb animation that I'll provide in the description below. We then need to set its pixels per unit to 16, change the sprite mode to multiple, change the filter mode to point no filter, and set the compression to none. Hit apply and we're good to go. Open the sprite editor, Hit Slice and select Grid by Cell Size under Type. Change the pixel size to 128 on both X and Y. Everything else can be left the same. Click on Slice and then hit Apply. Now back on the main screen, we can open up our animation window by clicking on Window, Animation, and Animations. After docking it underneath our scene view, we can click on our player game object and create a new animation clip. Navigate to our Animations folder and call it Ledge Climb. We can then set our sample rate to 12 and drag in all our sprites from the animation. Now we can jump into our code. We'll start by declaring another transform that will hold a reference to our ledge detecting game object. We will declare a boolean that will store if the new ray is detecting a wall or not. We can then go to our check surroundings function and set is touching ledge equal to physics 2 draycast using ledge checkedopposition as our origin transform.write as our direction, wall check distance as our distance, and what is ground as our layer mask. We can then come up and declare a new private void function called check ledge climb. That is going to be responsible for making the ledge climb happen when we do detect a ledge. Don't forget to call this function from update. We can then go back up to our variables and declare two new booleans. One called can climb ledge that is going to be set false by default, and another called ledge detected. Back in our check surroundings functions, we are going to put the simple logic to detect if there is a ledge or not. So we'll say if is touching wall and not is touching ledge, then we're going to set ledge detected equal to true. Oh, and we're also going to add and not ledge detected to the if parameters, as we only want this getting called once. Now we also need to store the position where the ray was being cast from as soon as the ledge was detected. So we'll say ledge position bottom equals wall checked up position, and this is a vector to so we need to go back up and declare this vector2. While we are here, we can declare the other two vector2s for the two points we are going to generate later. We'll just call them ledge position one and ledge position two. Now let's go to our check ledge climb function and start off by saying if ledge detected and not can climb ledge, then can climb ledge equals true. Now we need to generate those two points using the offsets. So let's go and declare four floats, an X and a Y offset for each point. So we'll just say public float ledge climb x offset 1 and public float ledge climb y offset 1 and then just make two more of these for point 2. So back in check ledge climb we can say that if the character is facing right we can set ledge position 1 equal to a new vector 2 and for our x parameters we're going to say mathf.floor which returns the largest integer below the value we give it. And because our tiles are 1 by 1 units it'll return the leftmost edge of the tile if we give our ledge position bottom.x plus our wall check distance to get the x coordinate of the tile. After mathf, we are going to subtract our first x offset to move the character more to the left of the bottom left corner. For our y parameter, we're going to say mathf.floor and use ledge position bottom.y as our input, and outside of that, we'll add our first y offset. So ledge position 2 equals a new vector 2, mathf.floor, ledge position bottom dot x, plus wall check distance, plus ledge climb x offset 2, and mathf.floor, ledge position bottom dot y, 
plus ledge climb y offset 2. Now we can say else, which means that the character is facing left, and which also means we just need to flip the way we do our points. So ledge position 1 is equal to a new vector 2, and this time we will use mathf.ceiling instead of floor so that it'll return the rightmost edge. Ledge position bottom dot x minus wall check distance plus ledge climb x offset 1. And for y we have the same as before. mathf.floor ledge position bottom dot y plus ledge climb y offset 1. And for ledge position 2 we say equals a new vector 2 mathf.ceiling ledge position bottom dot x minus wall check distance minus ledge climb x offset 2. And for y mathf.floor ledge position bottom dot y plus ledge climb y offset 2. Now once we have gotten these two points we want to remove control of the character from the player. So we will say can move equals false so the player cannot move the character while the animation is running and can flip equals false. Now outside of our first if we want to say if we can climb the ledge then we want to hold the position of the player game object at position 1. So we can just set its position to position 1 every frame. Now we just need to fix a small mistake in our code from last episode in our check input function where we say if not can move and change the not can move to turn timer is greater than or equal to zero. Now we need to make it so that while the animation is running the player does not try and wall slide. So go to check if wall sliding and just add and not can climb ledge to the first ifs parameter. Now we are going to declare a function that is going to get called at the end of the animation by our animation to tell us hey I'm done. Do what you need to do to finish the wall climb. So we'll say public void and it's public because it's getting called from outside the script and we'll just call it finish ledge climb. And inside the function we will say can climb ledge equals false, set our position to the second point with transform that position equals ledge position 2 and then we need to return control to the player so we can say can move equals true and can flip equals true and finally we say ledge detected equals false so that we can start looking for a ledge again. Now we also need to make sure that the animator knows that we want to play the ledge climb animation. So in our check ledge climb function we can say anim.setBool and the boolean we're going to set is called can climb ledge and we're going to set it equal to can climb ledge. We can also just copy and paste this into our finish ledge climb function. Okay now let's jump back into Unity and open up our animator window by clicking on window, animation and then animator. Click on our player game object to open its animator controller. We can see our ledge climb animation that we created earlier so let's just position it a bit better and let's make a transition from any state to our ledge climb state. Make sure that has exit time is not ticked and just drag the little timeline slider so that the animation changes instantly. We can then go to our parameters and create a new boolean and call it can climb ledge like we did in our code. We can then go to our transition and add a condition and set it so that can climb ledge is true. Then go up to the settings, click the little arrow and untick can transition to self. Now make another transition from ledge climb to idle and this time make sure has exit time is ticked and just drag the little slider so our animations don't blend. And finally we just need to click on the transition from any state to our jump slash fall blend tree and add another condition and set it to can climb ledge equals false. Okay now let's take another look at our ledge climb animation. We can go ahead and delete the last frame as it's part of the idle animation anyways. We can then go and click on the add event button and add the event to where the last frame was. Click on the event and just choose the finish ledge climb function we wrote earlier. Now we also need to animate our collider so that the player's collider follows the animation. Start by clicking the record button and opening the box colliders editor. For each frame just position it so that it fits nicely on the player like this. Now let's click on our player game object and set the offset values that we created earlier in the inspector. If you're not following along with these tutorials exactly you will probably need to play around with these values to suit your game and your animation but it's not that hard. So we can set our x offset 1 to 0 0.3, just leave the y offset as 0, and x offset 2 becomes 0 0.5, and y offset 2 becomes 2. We're almost done. We just need to create the ledge check game object as a child to our player, and just position it almost at the top of the character. And there we go, it works. 
Now one last final touch before we finish is to change our boring walk animation with a fun run animation. This will also be provided with the ledge climb animation. You know how to do this, import it, change its settings, slice it, but this time slice it as a 64 by 64 and create the animation. We can delete it from our animator and simply rename our walk state to run and change the animation for our new one. And there you go. That was my approach to the ledge climb grab system from Dead Cells. I hope this video helped you. Thank you for watching.